What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and uh, um, welcome to my uh, the special Saturday stream. I am here. I'm live here in Orlando, Florida at the 21 convention. Um, I gave my speech yesterday. Um, it was actually uh, about the three pillars of masculinity, and I'll definitely be talking more about that uh, on my show. Um, I might write a book. I might do a course on it. Um, I know that's, I know that's going to be... Um, that's probably going to be the basis of uh, my tour when I when I go on tour and start visiting um, places, uh, other cities next summer. So um, stay tuned for that. I'll probably I'll probably start talking about it uh, probably around the first quarter of next year. Anyway, so um, uh, I wanted to uh, do this uh, do this stream today to uh, to talk about Thursday's appearance Thursday's appearance on uh, Coach Greg Adams. Um, I went on with uh, with Coach Greg Adams. And uh, we had a good conversation, man. Um, we we agreed on most things. There were some things that we didn't agree on, but at the end, we we agreed to you know we agreed to say, hey, listen, man, like fundamentally, we are lockstep. There are some things that we differ on, um, but at the end of the day, we both respect one another. Um, I think our communities uh, respect one another, and um, uh, you know, we just decided, hey, you know, all of this in-house hate uh, has got to go. So basically, you know, I did that to sort of um, you know bridge the gap, uh, bridge the gap between myself and MGTOWs. I've been hard on MGTOWs uh, lately. Now, honestly, I can, and now to be honest with you, I could not give less of a shit what MGTOWs think of me. Um, if they hate me, I don't give a shit. Um, if they like me, don't give a shit either. Um, and if, you know, there are probably still some guys who quote unquote don't like me even after the coach Greg Adams interview. That's fine. I didn't do it for them to like me. Uh, the reason I did it was to get a better understanding about who and what MGTOW uh, men represent. And the reason I did it, uh, uh, quite honestly, is because I respect Coach Greg Adams, man. Um, I've, I've watched his content for a little while, and it's clear to me that he knows exactly what he's talking about. He gives really good information. Um, he has very good terms. The monkey double backflips and the 49ers, uh, those are very, very cool, uh, very, very funny. Uh, kind of like, and he tries to keep it clean. Uh, on his show, uh, kind of like how I do, you know, banana gobblers trying to keep it YouTube friendly, but of course YouTube deranked and, and, you know, demonetizes almost all of my content. Um, big thanks to Ryan Sullivan with the $2 super chat says, uh, $2 for kicks. Appreciate that. But Greg Adams is just, just by looking at him and listening to him, he appears to be a guy who has this shit together. And it was, you know, I, I thought to myself, and it's weird because when I found out that Coach Greg Adams identified as a MGTOW, uh, big thanks to Brown Hornet 1975 with the five dollar super chat. I appreciate that. But when I found out that he identified as a MGTOW, it blew me away because I thought MGTOWs were one thing, but Coach Greg Adams clearly was not who I believe MGTOWs were. So I reached out to him and I said, "Hey, look, man, we got to do a show together. I need you to educate me on who and what MGTOWs are. What are some of the myths?" And it was a very informative show. He was very respectful. Uh, the callers were very respectful. Big thanks to um, Mr. Barlow uh, with the $2 super chat. Uh, the only call that I really, the only call that really, you know, uh, that was really controversial was my very first call with uh, Grand Finale. Um, I guess he wanted to call up and, and air me out. Um, and listen, man, I wanted to air him out because he was, you know, uh, he was being, that, that was a lot of, uh, that was a lot of fake bravado, uh, to be honest with you. Um, he probably didn't like me before, probably doesn't like me now. Don't give a fuck. I do not give a fuck. Um, now he can go and tell all of his friends, yeah, you know, I aired Donovan Sharp out on the air. And listen, if you guys want to think that he got the best of me on that conversation, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Um, I could have clapped back. I could have gone back and forth with him. But that would have defeated the purpose of my appearance on the show. I didn't call. I didn't do the show to fight with McDowell's. I didn't go onto the show to say, hey, look, you guys have it wrong and I'm right and this and that and the other. Um so, uh, but, but I think that if grand finale had a chance to maybe call a little bit later, just understanding, I guess, where the show was going, maybe his tone would have been different. I don't know. Um, but Hey, listen, man, grand finale, if you're keeping score, grand finale, one Donovan sharp zero. All right, fine. You get the W you told you, you told me off on the air, you know, you get to hang your hat on that. I guess that's your, that's your, that's your claim to fame. Um, big thanks to Lestat with the, um, with the $2 super chat. He says, this is for the. M and Magb men against banana gobblers. <laughs> uh, that is actually quite funny. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that super chat. <laughs> um, but 
when I saw that Greg Adams identified as a MGTOW, I thought to myself, okay, maybe I have this wrong. Maybe I have the wrong idea about who and what MGTOWs are. And it appeared that I was. I was very, um, I was very misinformed um, about it. I thought that all, I thought that MGTOWs were lazy losers. That clearly was not the case. Uh, there are MGTOWs out there who preach self improvement, uh, self awareness, improving your body, you know, improving your finances. Um, you know, things of that nature, just, you know, overall dominating life and, and, uh, you know, making changes in your life to kick life's ass. Um, I thought that all MGTOWs were incels. Uh, at least I thought most of them were, that's not the case. Um, what I learned is that, what I learned is that a lot of MGTOWs, um, um, there are a lot of MGTOWs, like I said, who do preach self-improvement, but a lot of MGTOWs have checked out of the sexual marketplace because of their experiences in the sexual marketplace. Right. Like if you're an incel, how could you have experience in the sexual marketplace? And what really what really, really opened my eyes to where I was sort of misinformed was was when Coach Greg Adams uh, was when Coach Greg Adams said, well, you know, you've never been married. Right. Or I don't think I was like, no, no, no I've been married. And he he looked a little bit surprised. And the reason for that is. I realized that because my marriage didn't end the way the typical American marriage does, I realized that because of that, that's probably why I'm a little bit more risk tolerant. Um, yeah, I put my hand on the stove. I burned my hand on the stove, but not as not as badly as some other guys. Listen, I've been married before. I've had bad relationships before, but I don't have any kids that I know of. Uh, I didn't have any money or kids when I got divorced. So my ex-wife, Darcy, couldn't divorce rate me. I didn't have any money. She didn't have any money. We went our separate ways. It was literally just kind of a quick and painless ordeal. And so even though I was married for seven years and the marriage sucked, it didn't take my pound of flesh afterwards. Well, a lot of MGTOWs are guys who are paying child support. They're paying alimony. They got divorce rate. Uh, their wives decided to, to wait that 10 years and then and then check out on you know day, day number 365 of year 10 of the marriage and got half of all of his his present and future earnings. Um, that makes all the sense in the world, man. Like, I get it. I, I understand if men decide to go MGTOW and check out of the sexual marketplace because of their repeated failed experiences in the sexual marketplace, because the, the sexual, the S&P continues to take their pound of flesh from these guys. I get it. Like, there's no need in subjecting yourself to a sexual marketplace that literally hurts you every single time you try to dip in. Um, and that really... That really, really, and I don't know, if you guys go back and watch the show, I was really, I was really taken aback about, about how, uh, how oblivious I was to that. You know, like I talk about, well, I've had my shares of mistakes with women and I've been through this and that. And guys, trust me, I've had my share of heartbreak. I've had my share of sexual frustration. I've had my share of shenanigans with women, but I don't really have any other than the way I am and, and the way I run my life and the way I run my relationship. Other than that, other than that, I don't really have any discernible or tangible scars from my missteps with women. I'm not paying child support. I'm not paying alimony. I don't have my 401k or, or, or my, my paychecks being garnished. I haven't had my driver's license suspended because I missed the child support payment. I've never been to jail because I missed the child support payment. I'm not going through that at all. Um, now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that my experiences, my bad experiences are, are any less valid. But what that does mean is that because I hadn't really experienced the extreme in that regard with regards to child support, alimony, things of that nature, that's probably why I'm a little more risk tolerant. Um, I hadn't really, and again, I've been burned, don't get me wrong, but I hadn't, I hadn't been singed like those guys. And so listen, if a man has been married twice and he's paying child support for five kids, two of two and a half, maybe of which he's not really sure are his, um, if I was a guy who... Uh, had been a victim of paternity fraud and paying child support for a kid that wasn't biologically mine. If I was a guy who had his kids taken away from him, I can't see my kids, you know, because my my ex-wife or girlfriend is keeping them away from me, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I, 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 I can't say that I wouldn't myself say, you know what? I'm throwing my hands up. I'm out of here. I can't, I'm not doing this anymore. Every time, every time I, um, and I don't want to use the word put myself out there, but every time um, I try to, you know, I try to uh, give this thing a shot with regards to, with regards to women and, and dating and all that, if, if that really were the case, then I guess I can understand why men uh, would check out. So I get it. I get it. Um, I learned a lot uh, in that regard. Um, and again, that makes all the sense of the world. Now, Coach Greg Adams, man, um, he's as good as they come. Uh, he really is. He knows what he's talking about. He gives great information. 
Um, he has a huge he has a huge following for a reason. And listen, man, I'll probably make an appearance on his show sometime in the not too distant future. Uh, I thought it was a great time. He was very respectful. Now I didn't look at the chat, um, and it's it's interesting because in the chat, I'm probably sure there were guys in there just railing on me, and that's the reason I don't look at the chat. There's only one caller that really went in on me, and that was Grand Finale. But after that, all of the callers were completely respectful. They said, hey, listen, man, I don't agree with 100% of the things you say, Donovan, but hey, I, I respect your work. And when and if I ever decide to get back in to dating, get back into the sexual marketplace, then yeah, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll tune into your content. Um, my problem in terms of MGTOWs is that I thought that all MGTOWs checked out of the dating market. That's obviously not true. Um, I don't know how many have checked out of the dating market. I don't know what percentage of MGTOWs have checked out of the out of the dating market. Uh, but I will say this. It would appear that the loudest and most belligerent men who just bitch and moan about women all day, those guys aren't MGTOWs. Um, I think that there are a lot of guys who who like to shout and scream and holler under the banner of MGTOWs. And this is what makes MGTOWs look bad. Is that the is that the is that the actual lazy losers? Those are the guys that are the loudest, and those are the guys that say hashtag MGTOW. Oh, the sexual marketplace is not doing you right. You got fucked over. You got cheated on. Whatever the case may be, uh, this and that and the third, go MGTOW. And when somebody says go MGTOW, it's interesting. I think when somebody says go MGTOW to me, that says go MGTOW to me seems just stop messing with women altogether, right? If somebody, if so, because nobody ever just says go red pill. If you're on my channel, you're obviously red pill aware. Cam Jeffer with the comment of the day. I was just going to say that many incels, this is exactly what I was going to say. I actually had this on my notes here. Many incels, like Cam Jeffer says, masquerade as MGTOW and ruin the name. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, there are a lot of guys who, who, who are just lazy guys and they identify with MGTOW and they give the MGTOW community a bad name. Um, it really, that really is the case. Um, a lot of the MGTOWs are, or a lot of men who identify as MGTOWs, they're the incels. And I put that in quotes. I'm going to get to that in a minute. They're just mad because they can't get laid or they don't want to do what it takes to become a higher value male. So they identify as MGTOWs. And that's where, that's where I jump to conclusions. Guys who really are MGTOWs, guys who really are you know, trying to improve their lives and checking out of the central marketplace. Those guys really don't have to shout it from the highest mountaintop. Those guys don't really complain too much. Like if you're a MIG, if you really are a MGTOW, if you're the true embodiment of a MGTOW, you're not one who complains. Now, there's a difference between complaining and pointing out the, how can I put this? And pointing out the sexual market, you know, the, the, the fucked up state that the sexual marketplace is in. Push that toward the door, please. Um, so just because I, and this is something that Grand Finale said, oh, you do nothing but say feminist this and feminist that. Yeah, you're goddamn right I do, but that's not complaining, my nigga. You feel me? So, um, and I don't have anything against Grand Finale. It just, he, you know, he was very, he was very bold on the phone and I'm just, you know, okay, whatever. Listen, if you want me to give you the W, you got the W. You can tell all your little friends that you told Donovan Sharp on the air. But there's a big difference between complaining and, and pointing out facts, pointing out truth. When I say that the court systems are heavily skewed and biased towards women, that's not complaining. That's stating a fact. Now, there are a lot of guys who do talk about those things. There are a lot of guys who do say, oh, you know, the court system screwed me over. Oh, I can't stand this. Da, da, da. That could be borderline complaining. But pointing out truths is not always complaining. Um, now, all of that said, I still cannot stand these ignorant, lazy fucks who are lazy. They have a lack of drive. I can't stand these motherfuckers who make excuses. Guys, I have zero tolerance for that bullshit. I have no tolerance for guys like that, and I don't feel fucking sorry for them. I did a show, and I, I, I think this is the show. I, I did a call-in show about the about the U.S. Army, uh, you know, warning, you know, warning people. Hey, the um, um, uh, they were worried about violent, uh, you know, they were worried about you know incels uh, reacting violently. Uh, for screenings of the Joker. This, of course, is because uh, the guy, James, somebody in Colorado, in Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes, I think, whatever his name was, went in there and shot up and killed 12 people. That's what they were That's what they were worried about. And so, of course, that led into incels. And then, of course, me thinking that incels are just MGTOWs, that's where that came in. So somebody went back and told, you know, the MGTOW community, oh, Donovan Sharp went in on MGTOWs. Okay, well, you know, maybe that was the case. And that, of course, 
I didn't really go in. I, I went on on MGTOWs. I went on. I went in on the uh, group of people I'm going to label later. But I called it MGTOWs because there are a lot of MIG, There are a lot of incels, incels who identify as MGTOWs, and they're they're the loudest. So that's who I assumed they were. Big thanks to Big Brandon. Says my man Donovan, the greatest offensive coordinator. I like that. Yeah, that was one um, similarity, uh, one analogy that one of the callers made. He says, "Listen, man." He says, you and, and you and Coach Greg Adams, you know, you guys speak the truth. But where you guys differ is that you're on the same team. But Coach Greg Adams is the defense, is the defensive coordinator, right? Donovan Sharp is the offensive coordinator. That made all the sense in the world. We're on the same team. We just play on opposite sides of the football, as it were. And I mean, that that made all the sense in the world. Big thank you goes to, well, first, MGTOW Ghost Sun with the three dollars said it was great seeing you work together. Appreciate that. Uh, big thanks to Antarctic Kush God with the $20 super chat. Appreciate that. He says, if I'm being honest, you weren't far off about the incel thing because I never heard any MGTOW channel that says you can't be. I never heard any MGTOW channel that says uh, you can't be a basement neckbeard complaining about how these girls won't submit to you. That's real stuff. Yeah, exactly. Right. And listen, you can do all the complaining in the world. Oh, women aren't this, women aren't that. Well, if you ain't shit, you can't complain about women not being shit. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Um, but anyway, when I was when I had that call in show, when I had that call in show, I had one guy call in, and he said, "Yeah, I know people. I have friends who are into self improvement. They go to the gym. They learn game. They have their finances in order. Blah 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 blah. And they still can't get laid. And I was like, No, no, you're full of shit. They're not putting in the work that you that that they're telling you. Like they're telling you a lie. Any man who puts in the work and improves himself is going to have success with women, at least on a sexual level. Now, later on down the line, he might get screwed over because he doesn't have that red pill game. But you can't tell me that a man who works out, has his financial house in order, has a style game tight, and is an otherwise impressive male, you can't tell me those guys never get laid. You can't tell me that those guys. So of course, I figured out, well, he's talking about himself. We kept going back and forth. Like, listen, I've done, I, and I told him, listen, go to the gym, work out, learn game. I've done all that. I've done all that. I do everything. It's just too hard. I fucking lost it with that guy. And that's when my tirade on MGTOWs began. That guy that called me, that lazy fuck, that's not a MGTOW. That's a guy who wants to make a bunch of fucking excuses. Um, but MGTOWs don't check out. A, a, a true MGTOW doesn't check out because uh, because they're too lazy or not willing to improve themselves. They use the MGTOW banner to hide behind the fact that they won't compete in the sexual market value. These guys aren't MGTOWs, by the way. Big things goes out to Josh Quick, says offensive coordinator Sharp needs to be promoted as head coach. <laughs> I like these, uh, I like those analogies, man. I love it, I love it. Um, there are some guys who, now, now, now MGTOWs, again, true MGTOWs don't check out of the S&P because it's too hard. They check out because it's not worth the risk anymore. There's a difference between saying that it's not worth the risk and not worth the risk anymore. Some guys like to say, this is one of the, th th this is this is sort of a MGTOW credo, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. And guys, listen, most of the time it's not worth the squeeze. I Listen, I've had plenty of success with women. The juice ain't worth the squeeze other than the, you know, six and a half minutes of sex that you get out of them. Uh, big thanks goes out to AW, the $2 uh, super chat says MGTOW is that defensive game. Absolutely. And now I understand that. And that makes perfect sense. It makes it makes perfect sense. Guys like me play on the offensive side of the football. Guys who identify as MGTOWs play on the defensive side of the football. The only difference between guys like me and men who identify as MGTOWs is that I pursue rela uh, uh, sexual relationships with women and MGTOWs don't. And I understand why they don't. I get it. But if a man's never had the juice, how can he say it's not worth it, right? Well, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Well, how many girls have you had sex with? None. So how do you know the juice isn't worth the squeeze if you've never had the juice? You guys see what I'm saying there? They see other guys saying it, right? But because they're too lazy or not willing to improve themselves, they use the MGTOW banner to hide behind the fact that they won't compete in the sexual marketplace, guys. These guys aren't MGTOWs. These guys are just lazy. These are the men, gentlemen. These are the men who think that they are owed sex because they're men, okay? They think they're owed sex just because they have a cock and balls. Some guys who identify as MGTOWs, they, they, they check out of the sexual marketplace because they think that getting women should be easy, right? It's not. Getting women, sleeping with beautiful women, sleeping with women, period, is not easy. It's, it's just like for sluts. It's just like for sluts. 
Slugs know that getting a man of value, locking down a man of value for a long time commitment, that's not easy. So these guys who aren't willing to put in the work to make themselves sexually attractive to females are just like sluts who won't make themselves worthy of long-term commitment. Both is the easy thing to do. And both groups of people, both groups of people think they're the kings of the fucking world. Well, I don't want a long-term relationship with a, with a high value man because it's just not worth it. No, it's not worth it because you're not worth it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze fake MGTOW guy because you're not worth it. You've never had the fucking juice, my man. How can you tell me that that's like, that's like somebody putting a steak in front of you and saying, well, that steak tastes terrible. Well, how do you know? You haven't taken a bite out of the, out of the steak yet. Hang on guys. My throat is getting a little parched here, right? You can't talk shit about something you never had. You can't miss something you've never had. That's just how it goes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a name to this group of men. This is the episode. I'm going to give a name to this group of men. Thank you. I'm going to get a name. I'm going to give a name to this group of men. Here are our qualifiers. Here, here are our qualifiers. Number one, these men are lazy. Okay. Number two, these men have, have little to no sexual experience. Number three, they check out of the sexual marketplace because they think that sex with beautiful women should be easy. Number four, they make excuses before having tried to be successful with women. Number five, they, they only want to complain about how fucked up women are, but they're not interested in the solutions. Okay. Number six, these are the guys who talk about going overseas, but they're not in the process of doing so. Right. They can give us all of theirs. Well, the only solution is to pack your shit, get your passport and go overseas. Okay. You might think that, but are you doing that? Right. That's just complaining. Well, the only thing to do is to pack up and go overseas and fucking do it. Loser. Fucking do it. Don't call yourself a MGTOW. Fucking go do it. If you pack your shit and go overseas and have a good relationship, now you can call yourself a MGTOW. Uh, number six or seven, the next one is these guys, these are the guys who think that women are bad, but they don't know that women are bad. Women are neither good nor bad, guys. They, they, they just are. They're like water. They take the shape of the container that they're in, right? Um, here's another qualifier for these guys. They want the cheat code. They want the cheat code, right? These guys are lazy. Number six, these are the guys who no matter what you try to tell them about MGTOWs, you say, okay, well, this is what MGTOWs believe. They say, well, you still don't understand. No, if you're always telling me that I still don't understand, you're not a MGTOW. Being a MGTOW is not complicated. You, you are a man who has red pill awareness. And because you have red pill awareness, you have decided that it's not worth it to pursue American women. I get it. But the guy who calls himself MGTOW, even though you nail it every single time, and Coach Greg Adams agrees with this, he's the, these are the guys, well, you still don't get it. You still don't understand, right? Oh, wait a minute. I erased that. I, that was actually, I'm sorry, the, the you still don't understand, that was actually before this one. I, 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 went, I went out of order here. Here's another qualifier. They talk shit about men like me simply because I've had sex, because I've had success with women, right? Like, that's just how it is. Now, listen, guys. It may look easy, and I may make it look easy, but guys, trust and believe I've taken many more L's than I have had W's. That's just the case, right? And it's almost the same as like sluts cracking on players. Sluts think that players just get out of bed and we can just have sex with anyone we want. It doesn't work that way. Sluts think that players get laid just as easily as they do. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I thought I could. I thought I could see. Thought I could see more. How's that? Is that better? You got. It looks like you guys are only seeing the top of my head there. Jesus Christ. Yeah, look at my screen though. Tilt it up. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Fine. Go. Fine. Get out of here. Jesus. Um, there we go. Can you guys see my full? You guys having trouble seeing my face? You guys seeing my you guys uh, seeing my face? All right, very good. I thought that it was uh, I thought that uh, people were only seeing the top of my head. Um, anyway, here's here's uh, uh, here's another qualifier, um, or 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 just like sluts think that getting laid is easy for players. MGTOW or or not these MGTOWs, but this group of men they think it's easy to get women, and because it's not easy, they check out. They crack on guy. Well, you were born with a, a genetic advantages. That's why it's easy for you to get laid. Guys, there are many men born with all the genetic advantages. They have all the money in the world. They're still bad with women. Okay. It's the same with these bottom dollars. They think that it's easy. And because it's not easy for them, they check out. 
the real incels, you want to know who incels are? Okay. Real, the real, the only men who can call themselves incels are the mentally handicapped, the mentally retarded. That's it. And as most of us aren't mentally retarded, you can't call yourself an incel, right? There are some men who are physically handicapped. They still get women. I had a consultation with a guy who's a double leg amputee. He's got a girlfriend. Okay. So unless you are mentally handicapped and you are retarded, which means your mind just isn't right. That's the only way you can really qualify yourself as an incel. The point is, is there is no excuse. There's no excuse for any man. Now, again, if you've had success with women and you've been burned, I understand checking out of the sexual marketplace. I get it. I understand that. So what we're going to call these lazy men who identify as MGDOWs and say the juice isn't worth the squeeze, but have never really had the juice. I'm going to call these guys scabs. Okay. I don't have an acronym for it. I'm just going to call them scabs. So if a guy wants to be in the chat, oh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Nya, 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 nya. You're a scab. You're not a MGTOW. You're a scab. If I say, well, hey, I understand what MGTOWs believe. They understand red pill truth, but they understand that it's not worth the risk pursuing women in the United States or the Western Hemisphere. But he says, you don't understand. No, I do understand. I understand that you're a scab. You're not a MGTOW. A lot of you guys out there call yourselves MGTOWs. You're not really MGTOWs. You guys are scabs, okay? You understand? That's what you are. You are a scab. I know who the real MGTOWs are. They're guys like Coach Greg Adams. You understand what I'm saying? There are a lot of guys who watch Co Coach Greg Adams who call themselves MGTOWs. Those guys are scabs. Lazy crybaby. That's another way to put a scab. That's just how it is, right? So, <clears throat> so like I said, at the end of the day, I could not give less of a shit what the MGTOW community thinks of me. If they like me, great. If they don't, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But I do have a little more respect for them in terms of who they are and, and what they believe because I now understand it. And again, the main reason I did the show with Coach Craig Adams is, guys, men shouldn't be fighting each other, man. Dude, the world could not give less of a fuck about men, but we tear each other down all the fucking time. Ryan Stone actually had a tweet um, I actually saw it last night. I don't, I don't know when he tweeted it out, but he said something to this effect. He said, you know what, man? I miss the days when most of our detractors were feminazis and feminists in women. He's, he's completely right. When the red pill first sort of came to prominence on the internet, the only people that hated us, our only detractors were feminists, females, feminazis, right? But now most of the in-house hate, most of the hate comes from in-house. Most of our detractors, I don't, dude, I used to have women on my feet all the time. You don't know shit, da, 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 da. That still happens. But most guys who hate on me aren't women, gentlemen. They're men. That's a problem. This is the problem with the red pill community. There's another caller who called up, by the way, who said that the red pill community is sort of going in the way of religion. Religion is much the same way. Religion has cannibalized itself, and that's why there are more atheists now than there ever were. Big thanks goes out to MGTOW Ghost Son, who says MGTOW was supposed to be about understanding women, the system, and self-actualization. It's about living your best life. That's why you go your own way. A lot of people misunder misunderstand MGTOW today. Listen, I used to be in that camp. I get it. And that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what the, the, the red pill and MGTOW are lockstep in 99.9% .9 of what we believe, what we know to be the truth. Our solutions are a little bit different. That's it. And if a man has been divorce raped one, two, three times, whatever, and decides, you know what? I'm not doing it anymore. I get it. Like, I understand. You're not going to get any judgment from me. Um, so that's, um, I just want to let you guys know that I, I understand the MGTOW community much better than I did. And um, if you're a fake MGTOW, I'm not going to call you fake MGTOW. That is, you are a scab. So let's go through. Let's go through and see if we can identify some scabs. Shall we? Let's see here. Because I know there are probably some people in here. Hang on a second. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. No, I can see it just fine. Look. The reason why you had it this way, if you turn it landscape, you can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. All right. So here's what we got. I saw somebody in there with the screen name, Ricky Spanish. That was awesome. Nathan Scott says he can't see my chin. Yeah, my bad. Um, well, Shibby says, I'd love to see you face-to-face -face with LMS. I don't know who LMS is. 
guys. I don't know who that is. You guys are going to have to clue me in. Eugene Turner says masculinity is the answer, not MGTOW, neo-masculinity. Okay. Nathan Scott was triggered by the word socially or triggered by the word retarded. No, that wasn't meant to be derogatory, obviously. Damn, it doesn't let me see all of the... Oh, I guess it kind of does. No. Stop biting your nails. I paid good money for those. Ebon Enraged Rage says incels have a have psychology profile of women. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, scab, 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 scab. I don't see any scabs in here, man. Ah, yes, that's it. I love it. Scab, scared, crying, angry babies. I love it. That's it. That's what our, that, 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 we've got our acronym. So a scab is a scared, crying, angry baby. If you are a scared, crying, angry baby, you are a scab. You are not a MGTOW. If you tell me, Donovan, you still don't get it. You are not a MGTOW, my friend. You are a scab. Become, get very familiar with this. I'm going to start calling you guys what the hell you guys are. Raymond Everett with a $10 super chat. Ah, Raymond Everett says he was the fourth caller comparing religion and division. So Raymond Everett in the chat was the guy who called up and compared the red pill community to the religious community. Very, very good. Excellent. Zachariah Hayes says he hasn't seen a, an attractive woman in weeks. That's good. I like scab. Scared, crying, angry babies. I love it. I love it. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> TJ Alexander, Donovan, fucking sharp. Philippe says, vol cell more than scab. No, I get it, Philippe, uh, but scab just sounds better. It rolls off the tongue. And you would have to explain, well, what's a vol cell? You have to explain this shit to people. But scabs are, they're ugly. They're, you know, Mr. Shane Vicious says that atheists are very red pill. Yeah, yeah most of them are. Absolutely. Sunbus says, MGTOW versus red pill is similar to religious people who choose to be somewhat religious, religious versus going all the way MGTOW still have similar principles. Absolutely. Kevin said, Kevin A says, if you want to fully understand MGTOW, watch Liberation Wise YouTube channel. I don't need to fully understand MGTOW, uh, Kevin A. It's not complicated, my friend. MGTOWs are men who share most of the views that red pill guys do. But MGTOWs choose to just check out of the sexual marketplace because it's not worth it anymore. You can't tell me something isn't worth it if you've never had it before right? The juice isn't worth the squeeze. I get it. But that, but, but a, a true, see a scab says the juice isn't worth the squeeze. A mid towel says the juice isn't worth the squeeze anymore. That's the difference guys. That's the difference. I don't need to fully understand anything. I dude, I've dealt with these. I dude, I've dealt with mig or I've dealt with men who think they're mig towels for ages. I understand. You know what? I might not have a full understanding of what mig towel is, but I know what it's not. And it's not that. Sam Whiskey says, nice fade, bro. Um, yeah, actually, I didn't really mean to fade it. But uh, yeah, kind of work this area here with the razor a little bit. Trying to get the crispy hairline. Cam Jeffers says, if you're triggered, you're a female. Yeah, the word triggered is just, that's a female term. If something pisses you off, just say it pisses you off. Oh my God, I'm triggered. No, you just got pissed off. Steel Mongoose says red pill is simply a recognition of how things are. It doesn't necessarily imply a response. Very good. Uh, in Kulu, I'm gonna call you NZ Zulu, N Zulu. Says MGTOW still get women, they just choose not to be in a committed relationship and refuse to get married. Yeah, then I, I, at that point, then I'm almost a MGTOW. I'm in a committed relationship, but I will never get married. Hell no. Double H is from Denmark, very good. Mr. Shane Vicious says incels aren't even red pill. They reject blue, they are, they're rejected blue pillars. I like it. Okay, very good.
All right, let me see here. <clears throat> yes, there are a lot of men who call themselves MGTOW monks. Okay, again, if you're a MIG, if you're, listen, there are there is such a thing as a MGTOW monk, but a MGTOW monk is, is a man who has had success with women, who's had sex with women, but he's decided it's not worth it anymore. Again, Cam Jeffers says the scab acronym must spread through the manosphere and red pill. I'm going to spread the hell out of this scab thing. I'm going to do a short video on what a scab is. Cobra Delta, I watch both you and Coach Greg. Listen to what you both say and then apply the parts of which say into my life. Yeah, exactly. You quote two says the juice isn't worth the squeeze for certain types of men. Yes, for men who have had success with women and have been burned by women so badly and so repetitively that the juice isn't worth the squeeze anymore. The juice isn't worth the squeeze any longer. Again, I want to make this distinction. You can't say the juice isn't worth the squeeze if you've never had the juice, my friend. I guess J. Doe was being disrespectful. I didn't, I don't see any of his chats in here. The architect says acronyms are for women. That's exactly the problem here. All right. Uh, somebody time out the architect. You're out thinking the room, dude. You're out thinking the room. See, see again, the architect, that's a scab. That's a scab. Scabs always have a problem with a new phrase or a definition. Well, that's not exactly, or, well, that's the problem. No, the architect one, you, my friend, are a scab. Time them out, don't ban him, but you're a scab. That's what scabs do. Scabs always find what their version of a flaw is in any explanation. Scabs is the perfect definition for the men that I'm talking about, yet there's still something wrong with it because acronyms are for women. Really? What about the FBI, the CIA? You think that's for women? No, we have to, instead of calling the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which has 17 syllables, we call it the FBI. I'm not going to call them scared, crying, angry babies. I'm going to call them scabs because it's one syllable. Get the fuck out of here. Don't, dude, don't outthink the room. That guy's a scab. Guy, men like him, the architect, with the clever one as the eye, that's a scab. Guys who outthink the room. Guys who think that they're so much smarter than everybody else. That's a scab. Sanitary. Sanitary says scabs are everywhere. Scabs are everywhere, man. They really are. And a lot, dude, most scabs identify as MGTOW. They do. And this is why I got it wrong. This is why I got it wrong. Clarence Holmes says, what about I-M-B-O-R, guys? I don't know what that is. I see it all the time. I've never looked it up. <laughs> so C. C Bike Life 1975 says BG, Big Tell for Life. Black guys going in their own way. I think that's what that means, maybe. Shout out to Rolo Tomasi, who has made his way into the chat. Good to see you in here, my friend. The godfather of the manosphere. Jonathan Hayda says acronyms are heavily, are used heavily in the military. Exactly. Like, dude, dude, the architect, dude, you're a scab. That's what I'm going to start calling people anytime. I'm not even going to go in on these guys. Oh, you think you're, I'll think of the room. All right, you're a scab. Donovan has, uh, Donovan has acne as a pimple. You're a scab. How can you listen to this guy if he has bad skin? You're a scab. Jack Boniface says, why are scabs bad? Because they're scared, crying, angry babies who are masquerading as men going their own way. That's why they're bad. <laughs> Deadly Raver says he can't outthink that band. That's funny. Inadequate says, after avoiding getting taken to the cleaners from a divorce, I realize we all must have impeccable vetting standards. Absolutely. That is actually the very first section of my seven-hour, five-part audio course, How to Build a Quality Woman from the Ground Up. Section number one is the vetting process, the most important process there is. Now, Wayne says, is TLM a scab? I think he means is TFM a scab. No, TFM is not a scab. TFM is a MGTOW. Um, I heard around the campfire, heard through the grapevine that TFM, and, and again, don't quote me on this, but I've heard 
that he may have been like falsely accused of sexual harassment. I don't know how true that is. I don't want to put that out there. But yeah, from what I understand, Turd Flinging Monkey has had horrible experiences with women. Experiences with women being the operative phrase there. If you've never had experience with a woman, you can't say the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Turd Flinging Monkey is qualified in saying the juice isn't worth the squeeze. DDJ definitely can qualify, is qualified in saying the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Dude, DDJ has had plenty of juice. Most of that juice is terrible. So I get it. Yep, Cam Jeffers says MGTOWs and scabs are worlds apart in real life. Straight up. Oh, bikers going their own way. Okay, I got it. Nergana Baglia says MGTOW is red pill not marrying or cohabitating to avoid being exploded, but there are a lot of noisy dudes who want to belong to a group and cannot grow out of their fear of seducing women. Yes, scared, right? Scab, scared, crying, angry babies. We're going to spread the hell out of that. No problem, Jack Boniface. I got you covered, brother. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Future Pro 95 says, I think dudes that comment on another man's appearances are suspect as fuck. But listen, if you're talking about my, and actually, my acne is actually not acting up as badly as it could, <laughs> which really says something. By the way, I'm actually going to go see a dermatologist uh, when I get back to Philly because something's got to be done. But yeah, um, it's just a, it, it's just, it's just one of those deals, man, where if, you know, if you're not paying attention to the message, but you're just talking shit about the messenger, yeah, that's a scab. That's a scab. Just looking for a reason to disqualify what I say. Fine. Edwin Betancourt says, you had a girl accuse you of rape, Don. If not for you, if not for your voice recording the conversation, your life would be ruined. That's exactly what MGTOW was talking about. I agree. And it wasn't rape. It was actually a false domestic violence accusation. But yeah, like I had a girl. Her name was Dee Dee. I was seeing her for a few weeks. I decided to cut things off. She pulled a fast one on me and said that she had gotten pregnant. She said I was pregnant. I went to CBS. I made her take two pregnancy tests. She failed them both. Or she didn't fail them. She, she passed them both. Not failed. Both tests were negative. I said, see you later. As I'm walking out the door, she's calling the Las Vegas police. Yeah, my boyfriend is in here choking and slapping me. I couldn't go anywhere. If I run, that's it. I'm automatically guilty. I kept my cool. I recorded the conversation on my phone. I asked her why she was doing this, why she was lying, and she admitted to it. Oh, because, you know, I'm tired of this bullshit. Yeah, that was it. That's what MGTOW is about. I, I totally get it, man. I totally get it. Steel Mongoose says, for me, MGTOW means that I don't accept the social and legal ramifications of committed relationship. I think girls are just fine, but I engage them in my own terms. That's a MGTOW, man. Ha Ha Hunger says, Donnie Boy, picking up shaming language from feminists. Good job. Ha Ha Hunger, that's a scab. That's a scab. You're talking about the, you're, you're not, you're talking about the messenger and not the message. Call it what you want. You're a scab. When's the last time you got laid? He'll probably say, last night. Oh, wow. Third Eye TV comes up with a good acronym. Fear. False evidence appearing real. Wow, I like that. Robot Police with a $5 super chat says, it's been a while. Shout out to the Grand Master of Class, Mr. Sharp. You demand. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yep, calling a spade a spade. That's what's up. So Kevin A. asks, what do you think about the biological culture and ideological and ideological devaluation and disposal of men and enabling and enforcing of gynocentrism done by men? What do I think of that? I think it's bullshit. I think it's, this is obviously bad. This is just, this is, MT2 is in the house. What's up, brother? MT2 is in the house. Had his 19-year-old girlfriend out there in Europe. Hope you're doing well. He's called into the show a couple times. My guy MT2 is in the motherfucking house. Yeah, it's bad. That's what I think. It's 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 bad. Jeff Smith says, since I found MGTOW, I've gotten the best job I've ever had, I've ever gotten, and I've lost 125 pounds. Wow. And I do agree with your scab analogy. That's it. That's it. 
Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'll call it. Listen, name calling. LOL says Steve. I, I'll call you whatever the fuck I want. If I want to call you scab, I'll call you scab. You quote too says Donovan. Do you think that black men that do not fit the Mandingo stereotype are more likely to be scabs or incels? Now let's get this straight. You quote too. Scabs and incels are not the same. Scab, listen, scabs, incels, and MGTOWs, they are all separate from each other, okay? An incel is a man who is mentally handicapped. He is retarded. That's an involuntary celibate, okay? He is a, he is a man who cannot have sex because of his mental capacity. He, is not a, he does not have a normal functioning brain. That is an incel, all right? A MGTOW is a man who has had experience with women and has decided that he doesn't want to experience them anymore. Okay, a scab is someone who says the juice isn't worth the squeeze, but never had the juice. A scab thinks he is owed sex because he's a man. A scab checks out of the sexual marketplace because he thinks getting laid should be easy, and it's not. A scab doesn't want to put in the work, okay? That's what a scab is. So the answer to your question, do I think that black men who don't fit the Mandingo stereotype are most likely to be scabs? No, I don't fit the Mandingo stereotype, and I am as far from a scab as humanly possible. Focus hard. Ah, oh, focus hard says, let's go, Buffalo. Fuck you. <laughs> Listen, that's a must win by the Eagles, by the way. If we don't do it, if we go three and five, we're done. So focus hard, a very respectful fuck you. <laughs> Big thanks to Delta Squad, the $1 super chat. And apparently his messages were deleted by Sharp Assist. Uh, yeah, ban... Um, Ban uh, Delta Squad. He's obviously trying to get my attention. Okay. All right. Iron Catfish says, I'm a Dolphins fan. Don't laugh at me. Absolutely. Um, somebody asked me, what do I think about Coach Red Pill? I think Coach Red Pill is very similar to Coach Greg Adams. Maybe the, maybe the first part of the name Coach is kind of blending them together for me. I've watched a few of his videos. Um, yeah, I, think, I mean, listen, he, he offers a lot of good knowledge. You know, I wouldn't call him a scab. Um, he's probably a big tau guy, probably. Alexander says, Mandingo were bred to fight slaves and fought to the death for owners under entertainment. I know what I know what Mandingo fighting is. I watched Django too. I didn't know what Mandingo fighting was until I watched Django, guys. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. But when he says the Mandingo stereotype, what he's meaning is black dudes with big dicks. That's the Mandingo stereotype. Come on, Alexander, you know the deal. Launch for even, I keep guys with these crazy things, dude. So thanks to you, I've lost 35 pounds and I followed your advice to get a high value man to commit to me. Keep spreading the truth for us one percenters, women, go birds. Okay, I guess that's a woman. Goku-san, good to see you in here. Says, haven't been on your live, been on your live in a minute. My support, appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Hashim Abdullah, shout out to you, my friend. Says he hates MGTOW. Oh, Coach Red Pill is married. Okay. All right. Oh, Coach Red Pill is married to a woman who is 20 years younger. Okay. Very good. Somebody says for acne, go full carnivore diet for a month. It works miracles. I'm going to I'm gonna have to try something. I'm going to have to try something. Sandwich Caretaker with the $10 Super Chat says, I think above all else, there are good women out there, but at the same time, it's hard to find them. The same goes for kind-hearted gentlemen of society. It's scary how fast they're dwindling. I'm not here to talk about... Listen, I'm, my channel is about men improving themselves. I'm not here to talk shit about the men who ain't shit. I'm here to talk about men who, who, who want to put in the work to be better men. So if Sandwich Caretaker is a woman... I don't Listen, I'm not going to sit here and, and have a dick measuring contest. Yes, there are ain't shit men, but there are more ain't shit bitches, y'all. The difference is, is that ain't shit bitches get glorified for being ain't shit bitches. Ain't shit men don't get that same privilege. So you can miss me with that. I appreciate the support, but yeah, I'm not. Come on. So Canardo hates this coach. Ripple is not MGTOW. He doesn't hate them. He just believes it shouldn't be a lifelong thing. You know, I don't believe that that going MGTOW should be a lifelong thing either. But again, if listen, dude, if a man has been screwed over by by a lot of women. I'm not saying it's what I would do because I've been screwed over by countless women. I get it. 
It's not something I would do. This is why I don't tell men to go MGTOW. And when you say go MGTOW, all that means is go red pill. Just don't pursue women anymore. That's, that's what I believe it is. If you don't pursue women because you have had them in the past and it's just not worth it to you, cool, man. But if you've never had a woman before, if you're a virgin, you're not a MGTOW. You're not an incel. You're a scab. I guess there's a little bit of a tiff going on. Sam Whiskey says, great. Uh, sex is good for losing weight, too. Absolutely. The boy says, have you ever done a video about jungle fever? <laughs> I've done I've done videos about black men dating white women. I've done it. Brian Baptiste says, uh, why do you think that with so much hoeing, the blue pill still exists within our society? Well, that's easy because the economy depends on men lacking red pill awareness. That's why. So I'm getting all kinds of recommendations. Black seed oil, bentonite clay for skin. Okay. All right. Rain God Beat says that's not what it is. It means no marriage or kids. Dude, if I don't get 100% of what you think MGTOW is, dude, come on, man. Like, no shit, right? You know what? Red pillars think no marriage, no kids either, right? I don't know, man. You're, 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 I think that dude, Rain God Beats, I think you might be a scab. I'm not 100% sure, but don't be, but again, like, I know what MGTOW, listen, I don't know what MGTOWs are completely, but I know what they're not, right? I don't need anyone here. And I don't need a fucking dictionary or glossary to tell me to explain the finer points of MGTOW. I know what MGTOWs are. MGTOWs are 99.9% .9 red pill. They just choose not to involve themselves with women, at least not on a commitment or marriage level. That's what being a MGTOW is, dude. All these elaborate, there's nothing special about MGTOWs. There's nothing special about red pill guys. MIG, dude, there are a lot of MGTOWs, true MGTOWs, who, who, and actually, you know what? I don't even think they're MGTOWs. I think these are scabs. Scabs who pretend that they're MGTOWs want to think that MGTOW is the end all be all. I had a guy in the chat the other day tell one of my mods, well, MGTOW was one step above red pill. That guy is a scab. That's guy, that guy's a scab. James Collins says, okay, good. I don't know what he's talking about because I made fun of for not trusting them easily. Now I just don't care. Do I desire companionship? Yes, but I don't want to risk another fake accusation against me. Okay, there we go. That James Collins is a MGTOW. He has experienced a false accusation. I get it. I get it. I understand it. Totally get it. 522 people in the chat. Snake diet. Check out Cole Robinson for the acne. Appreciate that. D. Radcliffe says, if you're having problems with women, take a break for a while and, ac and, and access the problems. Yeah, that's the equivalent of going into mug mode for a few months. Mr. Shane Vicious says, the blue pill exists for the same reason religion exists. Could not agree more. Cam Jeffers says, MGTOWs can, incels can't. Wrong. MGTOWs can and incels can. But again, or incels cannot, right? And the reason why incels can't is because the only men the only men who can say, who we can point to and say, that is a man who is an involuntary celibate are men who have, who are mentally retarded, men who are mentally handicapped. If you are a normal functioning male, meaning that you're of sound body and mind, there are no excuses. You're not an incel. You're a man who just doesn't want to put in the work. You're a man who thinks getting laid should be easy. And because it's not, you call yourself a MGTOW. You're not a MGTOW. You're a, you're, you're, you're a scab. Good definition there. Broken Bishop says, MGTOW is a philosophy. That's why they agree on nothing, but it's about self-actualization. Okay, fine. Curtis Freeman says, it's about ideologies and not a competition. I agree, man. I agree. I'm not here to compete with MGTOWs. I'm not here to compete with PUAs. We got to be team male, guys. We can't continue all of this infighting. We can't do it. And men who come in here and talk shit about me, you're a scab, dude. Like, man, look, check this out. We may see things a little bit differently, but our fundamental understanding about who and what women really are, that's what puts us all on the same team. We're all under the banner of red pill. That's how it is, man. That's how it is. 
But if you are, if if, if you want to sit here and try and parse and, and split hairs about the definitions of MGTOW and that's then you're a scab, dude. If you if you if if somebody asks you what MGTOW is and they and you talk for 15 minutes about what MGTOW is, you're not a MGTOW. You're a scab, my friend. If somebody says, Donovan, what exactly is the red pill? You know, listen, man. I mean, it's it's basically the opposite of the Disney dream, man. And feminism is bad. That's it. Pablo says MGTOW is more black pill than red pill. Yeah, see, there's that black pill thing too. I got to do a little bit more research into what black pill is. I think the black pill was created. And again, I'm just speculating. I'm just thinking out loud here. I think the black pill are 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 probably guys. Black the black pill. I think I could be wrong. I think, and I'll do some more research. I think that the black pill are scabs who don't want to call themselves migtails but they want to be one level up well i'm not a migtail or a red pill i'm black pill i'm a badass fuck out of here broken bishop everybody wants to be different devin just said it behind my best shoulder everybody wants to be different man everybody wants to be different broken bishop says black pill is just pessimism that sounds like a scab to me <laughs> i don't know i don't know much about black pill but Nobody 468 says, how's the tattoo healing up? The, the tattoo is healing up just fine. I took the plastic off a couple days ago. Tattoo's looking good. If you guys can see it there. It's healing up just nicely. Appreciate that. All right. Iron Catfish says, bottom line, all men agree the system is rigged. Whether you are MGTOW, incel, or otherwise, family court treats men all the same. Drop the labels and discuss how men protect themselves. That's MGTOW. Okay, the fact that you put a label on that, but I get it. I agree with you. I agree with you. That's not MGTOW. That's red pill. MGTOW is not separate from red pill, gentlemen. MGTOW is under the banner of red pill. Dude, red, dude, the red pill, pickup artists, MGTOWs, um, every, every group of men that knows that feminism is bad and knows that the, the Disney dream is not alive and well and knows that the system is rigged. There's no, that, that's, that's under the banner of red pill. All of that is under the banner of red pill. The MGTOW is not separate from the red pill guys. MGTOW is under the, the banner of red pill. Disco Jensen says, let the chads and thirsty blue pills chase women. It drives the economy going your own way and improving your health, wealth, and knowledge seems better to me. Interesting you say that, Disco Jensen. Going your own way and improving your health, wealth, and knowledge attracts women, right? Again, again, there's nothing wrong with pursuing women. Just because you pursue women doesn't mean you're a blue pill, doesn't mean you're a chad. I was red pill and I pursued women. I'm in a relationship now. That doesn't make me a blue pill. It doesn't make me a pussy beggar. Black Bank Fool with five Canadian dollars says MGTOW is cancer and has devolved into nothing but women hating no matter what they say. They just scare women away. Bad optics for men. The MGTOW has turned into, see, there's a sector of the MGTOW, like I said, that are full of scabs. These are the loudest guys who do nothing but talk shit about women. There are a lot of men, listen, if I'm being honest, there are a lot of red pill, red pill content creators who are scabs. They, man, I'm trying to tell you guys, I'm trying to tell you guys. A lot of red pill guys with a big following. Those guys are scabs. Extra Glock wants to know, what do I think about the media saying the Eagles locker room is falling, falling apart? I believe they could be right. Pablo says, what's under the banner of the Manosphere? The Manosphere is under, oh, actually, you know what? The Manosphere, so I think the Manosphere is the banner, right? So that's a good question, Pablo. So the Manosphere is the banner. The Manosphere encompasses the red pill, pickup artistry, MGTOWs, and everything else. That's the Manosphere. So the Manosphere is the banner. Red pill, MGTOW, and all the other stuff, those are banners under the banner. I'm not, dude, I, guys, I'm not going to get into these ridiculous definitions. I don't, I don't have to explain it, and neither do you, right? Like, we know what it is. We don't have to sit here and talk about it. Well, this is what this is. No, we don't have to define anything. We all know that the central marketplace is fucked up. Bitches ain't shit. If you want to fuck bitches and not get your pound of flesh taken, you need game. If you want to get women, get money, get fit, uh, and, and get mentally strong. That's it. What you decide to do with that information is up to you. That's what Coach Greg Adams says, and I agree. Grand Baptiste says, I would pay a great deal 
for you to do a show with Alpha Male Strategies. I actually did one with him about a year and a half ago. Robert Police says, I've heard of white pill. Oh, God. Everybody, wa dude, everybody wants to be different, man, right? Everybody wants to, oh, Jesus. The only reason why I coined the phrase scab is because I don't want to call these guys incel or I don't want to call these guys MGTOWs anymore. I don't want to, dude, MGTOWs are a respectable group, man. They really, really are. But I've been calling scabs MGTOWs and that's why the MGTOW community got upset with me. I get it. I get it. I had it wrong, guys. But what you need to understand is that there is a group that call themselves MGTOWs that are really scabs. The scabs are what make are, are what make the MGTOWs, that, that's what gives the MGTOWs the bad name. Scabs are what gives the red pill. You wanna know something? When the media talks about the manosphere and red pill, they're not talking about the red pill. They're not talking about MGTOWs. They're talking about scabs. Scabs are easy targets for the media. Cesar uh, Payetis. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Greetings from Panama City, Panama. Good to see you in here. Tech Man Killer. Tech Man Clan Killer 187. The funniest motherfucker in the chat sometimes. Yeah. Justin K says, how do you know when your girlfriend is getting fat? When she fits into your white <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That was good. That was really good, Justin. That was good. That was really fucking good. <laughs> oh, that was good. I like it. I love it. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. All right, guys. Yeah, and says so many pills. Yeah, dude. Totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> yeah, there's dude. The red pill's like a pharmacy now, right? There's red pill, black pill, white pill. Hell, even Roosh has coined it the God pill. I said, Roosh, come on, you don't need to name it that. <laughs> you remember that? He was at my house uh, uh, a while back. Jonathan Hayda with a night with a five dollar super chat says, "Thank you for the new acronym. I used to be a scab, but thanks to your content, I'm changing my beta ways. Yes, thank you, thank you. Excellent. Okay, man. Um, Westwood says Buffalo, New York sucks. I don't know. I've, I've never been." Uh, the Eagles are going to Buffalo, New York. They're probably there now, and hopefully we can pull out the W because those are no joke. Um, so, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, like I said, I just wanted to sort of give my my recap on my appearance with Coach Greg Adams. Uh, to sum this all up, man, the MGTOW community is a respectable community. Um, you know, I can admit that I had the, my definition in terms of what I thought MGTOWs were. It was wrong. It was misguided. I was misinformed. I didn't take the time. It, it, hell, it took me, what, two and a half, three years to finally just get onto a MGTOW channel and say, hey, listen, man, educate me on what MGTOW is. That, that's my mistake. I should have done this sooner. Uh, listen, I'm man enough to admit that when I get when I get something wrong. I got the MGTOW community wrong, man. I did. I now realize that, the, that, that, that me going in on MGTOWs was just me going in on scabs. So if, you're, if, if you really are a true MGTOW, um, listen, man, you're not going to catch any heat from me. Um, uh, but, but just because you have MGTOW by your name and you identify as a MGTOW doesn't mean you're MGTOW, right? Listen, I can tell. I can tell. I know the difference between a true MGTOW and a scab, right? So... Just in the future, if you have MGTOW by your name and you start talking shit, I'm be like, you know what? I think he's a scab. I think he's a scab. I like it. I like it. All right, guys. Well, um, that's going to do it. I'm going to jump in the shower and I'm going to head down and try to... Who's speaking today at the 21? Do we have a, an itinerary? Um, I don't know who's speaking today at the 21 convention, uh, but, I, but, but I love going down there. Ivan Throne's speech was unbelievable. Um, I actually had, uh, uh, Devin and I had dinner with Ivan Throne and his wife, uh, dude, great people, uh, great conversation. Uh, matter of fact, yeah, I got to take some cash down there so I can buy his books, but, um, the 21 convention, man, um, it really is, uh, it's been a great time. I did my speech yesterday. I'm looking forward to going down there. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you to all of my, uh, all of my super chatters sandwich caretaker with another sandwich caretaker. With another um, $10 super chat, he said, your channel is basically helping me break free of my social recluse mentally and pursue the path of being the man I was meant to be. Helping me break free of the scab mentality and want to work hard. Again, I have respect for MGTOWs, guys. So I don't want you guys to think that MGTOWs aren't bad guys. They're not. The scabs are the ones that we're talking about. 
But I appreciate that sandwich caretaker. Very good. Very, very good. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. And um, I will see you. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. I'll probably do a live stream maybe later or tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.